Ed Gein, a man known across the world for his notorious crimes. The story of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Ed Gein, born in 1906, died in 1984. Ed Gein was one of the most notorious Sierra killers known to this day in the world. Ed Gein was raised beside his older brother, Henry, on an isolated farm in the middle of Plainfield, Wisconsin. After Gein's father had died in early 1940s, Gein's brother had followed right behind him. In 1994, Gein's brother would have died from mysterious fire that started in the house, only killing him. Then, one year later, Gein lost his mother in 1945 due to health problems that could not be fixed during the times. At this point in time, Gein had nobody, so he decided he would remain on the farm alone. Ed had a very troubling childhood. So being alone and in his head probably wasn't for the best. Ed was little, his mother was very religious, and she would tell him that all women were devils, they needed to be handled and taken care of, aka killed, except for her. His father was also a drunk, abusive alcoholic that would abuse his mom and him and his little bigger brother. And all the information on how Ed was raised, there was no doubt in anybody's mind that he was definitely an odd kid, an odd ball. But that's all everybody thought it was. They thought he was just a weird guy. They never thought that they would find out what they found out. About a year after Ed's mom had passed away, he taped off every part of the house that she had frequently used as if it were some type of shrine to her. After Gein's mother had died, he had went down a pretty bad downhill spiral. And Gein had decided he was not going to leave the house, he wasn't going to talk to anybody else, and he especially would not date any other woman because of what he was told by his mother, who had just passed. Because of this, the rest of the house got left in such a distraught and squander. At this point in time, Ed started to develop weird characteristics. Like, he started getting a whole bunch of entomedy books and reading up on them. He suggested that he just liked them a lot. Meanwhile, a few residents from the area started to get really eerie and suspicious of Ed. Over the years, there had been a few disappearances of a few women that Ed had been frequently seen with, like Mary Hogan that ran a tavern near Pine Grove that Ed always went to. The woman was 45 years old and disappeared in 1954. November 15, 1957, Denise Wander, a 58-year-old woman, was announced missing was reported missing from her hardware store with the cat register gone in a trail of blood leading out back. Son Frank at the time was a deputy sheriff and was very suspicious of Gein, so that's where he went looking first. At night, the authorities that were sent to Gein's house were greeted by a gruesome discovery of a headless body gutted and hanging upside down from the ceiling. Head was soon to be found in a sack where it was found shortly after placed in a bag hidden away. As their investigation went even further, they discovered more gruesome discoveries, like organs that were placed inside jars and skulls that were used for soup bowls, a belt that seemed to be made from human nipples. For that night, authorities brought in 51-year-old Ed Gein in for questioning. Ed immediately began by confessing the killing of Warden. Also by saying three years earlier, he had killed Hogan as well. Authorities asked Ed how he went about killing both women. Ed then replied he shot both of them and then cut their heads off. 
hung them upside down, slit them so he could get their organs out, and then he made things out of their skin, like lamps, belts, seats, chairs. He also used their skulls and limbs for many things as well. After Ed had admitted everything to the cops, another investigation was held where they went to his house and gathered up all of the evidence and everything they needed to make a case against him. After everything was all said and done, Ed did have a trial January of 1958. Within this trial, Gein was found unfit to even stand the trial because he was diagnosed with schizophrenia at the time. Because of him seeming unfit and diagnosed with the schizophrenia, he was committed to Central State Hospital in Wapa, Wisconsin, where he worked variously as a Mason Carpenter assistant and a medical center assistant. After many years had passed, the judge now thought Ed was fit to stand trial in early 1968. That November, Ed was found guilty of first degree murder but the judge declared him insane at the time that he committed the murders, so he would withstand a long stay in a mental hospital. Ed carried out the rest of his life in this mental hospital until he was 77 years old, where he died from respiratory failures and complications from lung cancer. His time of death is still uncertain, but the day Ed Gein's reign would officially be deemed over would be July 26, 1984. All right, guys, we have reached the end of our video. I really hope you guys like the fascinating life of Ed Gein. It's honestly been a wild ride exploring the mysteries, myths surrounding him. Remember, it's always important to separate the facts from fiction when it comes to history. While some aspects of Ed Gein's story may be rooted in truth, others are just more speculation than anything. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and all of my conspiracy theories. If you guys like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. Thank you for joining next time.